from creating a PC version of the game. Then you have to do the maths and it really destroyed my thumbs. So what about the monetization? Is it pay to win? Hi everyone, Elio here, the new game director of uh, World War Armies. <laughs> I'm with Boris, uh, the founder and previous director of everything on <laughs> World War Armies. <laughs> so we're going to have a chat about discussing actually the origins uh, of the game uh, and the choices that were made in the past. So we're going to start with what makes World War Armies special amongst other RTSs. I think in order to understand what makes the game special, we have to go back to the roots of the project, right? Uh, back in 2019, we were really thinking about the RTS genre uh, and what's missing. So what was apparent was that, first of all, uh, there is no real competitive RTS that was still alive and doing well. So for us, for us that was kind of a challenge uh, to see, okay, so why aren't there any RTSs that are really pushing the competitive edge like StarCraft II did uh, back in the day? Uh, and the second thing is the accessibility. We saw that uh, a lot of the RTSs that are there on the market, they are highly complex um, and the barrier to entry is really, really high. So what we wanted to solve with World War Armies is uh, those two problems. We wanted to be uh, to make it an accessible game so that literally anyone can understand the game and uh, pick it up and start playing. And also we wanted to really drive the competitive edge. That's why when we started developing the game, we didn't go into the campaign mode development. We went straight into one versus one. You know, the stuff that uh, is uh, StarCraft II was the most famous for the one versus one tournaments. Um, it's really what we thought was the crux of the uh, RTS and its future. So all in all, our um, main point with World War Armies was to revitalize the genre, make it exciting, make it accessible, and make the competitive scene uh, stand out f uh, for the game. All right, and what was the development history of World War Armies? Man, I must tell you, um, it wasn't an easy project. Uh, what we initially thought would take us a year took us a couple of years. Um, and there are reasons for that. Not because we were slow in development, actually the team was extremely fast considering we had very limited resources, but we went through a lot of iterations. So the most important thing for us is the battlefield. So when we started developing the game, we created a PC version of the game first. So we had the base building. So, you know, if you played games like Company of Heroes or you play StarCraft or Warcraft, what you do first is you create buildings and then w once you gather the resources, you can unlock troops um, through that building. So we had all that. Um, but what we've realized uh, is that it really is cumbersome and uh, prohibitive because when you have a really active battlefield and you have to control your troops and you know you have to manage them retreat or attack or capture this point, uh, you also have to remember, oh, I, I forgot to build something at the base. So for us, it was about solving the problem uh, that I think uh, c were created originally by, by the complexity of RTS genre. Uh, you had to manage too many things at the same time. So from creating a PC version of the game, we went to creating uh, and narrowing it down to what really mattered. And for us, it was really the battlefield. We thought that you know by focusing on the battlefield, first of all, you wouldn't need to constantly go back to your base and then to the point of your interests and uh, back and forth. Uh, you know, if you're a mobile player, your thumbs were so tired when we were play testing. Literally, my thumbs were really aching, and uh, you know, I, I thought I had strong thumbs, but uh, <laughs> by creating a PC version of RTS for uh, for mobile, it really destroyed my thumbs. So we really wanted to simplify. W what was really obvious, you know, uh, if you look at the game now, you can unlock tiers and each behind each tier you have a set of units. So it's the same mechanic, it's the same building, but it's visualized, visualized as a tier and it's always there for you. Obviously, we didn't arrive at this solution straight away. First of all, we had, you know, a big um, on-screen tab menu where you switch between tabs of which troops you want to, but gradually we simplified, simplified to the point where Okay, this is enough uh, because basically uh, we achieved the best user experience um, and uh, we got to the point where you really were just, you know, focusing on the battle. So for us, 
you know, when we talk about uh, World War Armies is a mobile RTS, yes, but the focus was on the user experience. We wanted to make the game really great, really accessible. So we basically wanted to make sure that the UX is at the center of everything, that it's easy to control the battlefield and that anyone can do it. So really it was about UX and enabling a lot of the players to play the game. It's very complex to make it simple. <laughs> it, it is very complex to make it simple. Now we are back to the PC version of the game. And, you know, when we were designing the PC version, obviously it was much easier for us to make it uh, complex back again. But it was so, so hard in the beginning to literally, okay, we have that set of, um, you know, we had that set of mechanics. We're scrapping them, we're scrapping them, we're scrapping them. <laughs> It's an interesting process, but it led to what we have today, which yes. is something that, as you said, can be onboarded by anyone. One of the very few, if not the only, RTS that can actually do that. 100%, yeah. So what about the monetization in World War Armies? Is it pay to win? Can you tell us more about where it came from and like yeah. uh, sure. all the origins? Sure. Um, so basically, World War Armies is a free-to-play game, right? And free-to-play means that we enable anyone to download the game and start playing. That was the idea, is basically remove all the possible barriers for any users. Make it a free game, make it accessible and playable on all the devices possible, right? So we have mobile, we will have PC. And with that choice uh, came a few uh, design challenges that we had to kind of embrace. Um, so when you create a free-to-play game, Obviously, as developers, we have to uh, make some money. And one of the best solutions we thought were in the market was basically making sure that each unit gets an upgrade um, and also making sure that there is a skin economy. So now the upgrading part is definitely labeled as pay to win usually. And if we you know, consider upgrading uh, pay to win, yes, then the game is, can be considered as a pay to win game. On the other hand, um, the best examples in the market, like Clash Royale, um, they do it very elegantly so that, yes, you can upgrade the unit, but once you upgrade it, you are matched against the players who also have the same level of units. So that's what we have um, made uh, with World War Armies. So for us, upgrading units is a lot more about the progression rather than allowing you pay to win. We don't allow for anything like this to happen when you, for example, pay inside the game and you decide to upgrade your mouse to level 15. We, we don't match you against noobs and basically make you destroy them. Yes, sometimes uh, this thing happened. Uh, you know, we have a limited number of concurrent users, so sometimes you get into a match which seems unfair. And um, that's, I think, you know, the problem of a lot of competitive games. But majority of the cases, 90% of the cases, you are matched against players who have units of the same level. So basically, it's really about the progression rather than allowing you to win if you pay a lot of money. Um, so that's the design philosophy that we've embarked on. Um, and uh, it's proving to work. Obviously, we are enhancing as we go, right? So the matchmaking system is, uh, we constantly need to look at it critically. And um, that's an, uh, I'm addressing all of the players here now. Guys, if you have problems that you want us to explore and investigate, please make sure to send them to uh, our Discord and to our email. We'll be happy to look at it and enhance our matchmaking uh, with your help. What about approachability in uh, World War Armies? What makes it a game that can be onboarded by everyone? But how do you, did you tackle, like in the original design decisions, that it can also be played by highly competitive users? Yeah, OK, cool. So um, there are a few parts um, and few design decisions uh, that we embrace in order to make the game approachable. So first of all, uh, when we think about RTS, a lot of it is about the base building, right? And uh, that's where we love a lot of the games like Age of Empires, uh, like StarCraft. We've made it simple. So we've made base building into tiers. So you have tier one, two, three, which you unlock and you get the units uh, that are locked under those tiers. So you don't have to remember, oh, which building is responsible for infantry? Oh, what does this depot create? Um, you don't have to think about it. You, it's always visible on your screen, what you can build, which units you can recruit. So uh, basically 
that makes it super approachable. But as a pro player, you always can, and you know, like in any other game, recruit the units you want. In fact, our game, because you have to pre-pick units before you go into the battle, it forces you to think a lot more about the stats of each unit. Because you have limited slots in your deck, you must prepare your strategy beforehand. Should I go all in, you know, with tier one, like have t five tier one units and just rush the base? Or should you wait until tier three so that, you know, you have really powerful units there and your tier one and two are just the filler so that you don't lose the battle. So basically, uh, that makes it a lot more exciting for competitive players. And the fact that we also introduce rebalances to the game, you know, when we look into the analytics and what's happening to the, to the matches, we introduce rebalances and hopefully you'll uh, introduce uh, a lot more of them because uh, that makes the game a lot more exciting. Um, it basically makes it a lot more interesting for the pro, pro players to keep on playing, right? It's not always the same unit that wins. It's not always the same deck that wins. It's always going to be different. And I think that's what really is uh, exciting for the experts. So from a starter where you just have your first eight units and you can select them and go freely to the pro where you have all 70 plus units unlocked and you have to do the maths and uh, think, OK, I must uh, pick this unit for this purpose or that artillery to, you know, annihilate the, uh, the, the base of the other player. Um, so that's uh, one part about the base building and pre-picking the units. Uh, the second part is obviously the control of the battlefield, right? So uh, we don't have that many units that have special abilities. Uh, that makes it easier uh, because basically when we design each unit, they all have their spe specialization. So uh, machine gun, for example, is rapid fire from afar, right? Uh, rifleman, closer range, but they're quicker to move. Um, things like this uh, were pre-built in each unit. So instead of like thinking, oh, which ability does this unit have? Actually, we had all these different abilities. Like initially, when we built the game, uh, each unit had three specializations. We, you know, the tree, okay. the tree of know. development. You okay. you haven't seen this, but <laughs> this was there. Uh, but really, it didn't add any value to the gameplay. Um, so we removed that and we put it all on the pre-picking. So on the battlefield, you literally have to choose your unit. You have to know what uh, what it does, but if you don't know, that's fine. Uh, you know, upon your onboarding, you learn a lot about the units and you send them for their purpose. It's either capture a point or combat the units of the uh, of your enemy. As there's not much more to it. So like when you look at the game, it looks very simple, but all the maths should be happening here, right? It's all about uh, the strategic decisions you make before each battle. And then as the battle develops, you should be thinking, OK, so my opponent, he is using, you know, tier two rush. Should I wait? Should I give him uh, the points? Should I use the officer's ability to counter him right now? So it's all about, you know, these decisions uh, that happen in your head. But you don't have to cr have like 200 APM. Uh, you don't have to do all this, you know, <laughs> constantly to win the battle. Uh, it's a lot more about your, uh, you know, strategy and your tactical decisions that do not depend on your tapping. And I think that's also a big part of the accessibility, but also really interesting for the expert because he has to do everything here. How is World War Armies different than other RTS released on mobile or even any other mobile games for that instance? Okay, so World War Armies uh, is a beast of its own uh, because there aren't that many RTS games for mobile. And what I, what I think is that World War Armies is truly a core game, right? So. Unlike a lot of other mobile games where it's all about just tap, upgrade, no gameplay at all whatsoever, World War Armies is about the core gameplay. You spend much more time playing the core game rather than upgrading the units and doing all the other uh, what is considered to be meta gameplay. So I think that makes World War Armies a truly unique crossplay game is that, uh, you know, first of all, uh, we released it on mobile with a vision to make it crossplay. And I think, uh, what we see from the community, thank you so much guys for providing all these comments, is that it's a unique game. There's no, nothing like that. Yes, people compare it to Company of Heroes. They say, oh, I get this vibe from the strategy games of early 2000s. That is absolutely true. But again, like there's nothing um, that is comparable at the moment uh, on mobile. Um, and also, when you think about the PC, uh, the market of PC free-to-play RTS games is really, really small, right? I mean, there is nothing there. And for us, it's an opportunity to provide a game to the players 
um, that is accessible, that is still core, uh, but that is also fun. You know, I'm aware, and I actually know some of the guys who are producing and developing RTS games for PC, and they're going to be free to play. And I've played some of them. They look amazing. They look very good. Um, but I still think we are doing something truly, truly different. I'm going to leave that to the players to discover. You know, we are participating in this team uh, next fest, uh, so you can get um, to play the game soon. Um, and, you know, decide for yourself. What do you think about the game? What do you think about the game? What do you think of the gameplay? Uh, and yeah, we'll be glad to hear feedback and uh, please send it our way. Thank you. See you next fest very soon. See you next fest very soon. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for staying with us until now. Um, I'm really glad that you've uh, watched the whole episode. Please follow us on social media. Download World War Armies on mobile and on PC very soon. And uh, follow us on social media for updates. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Boris. Thank you. <laughs>